This is Trevor Murdoch, the NWA World Heavyweight Champion. You guys are listening to Live and in Color with Wolfie D. Hey, this is Jimmy Street, host of the Live and in Color with Wolfie D podcast. Hear the life and times of professional wrestler Wolfie D. From his time in the territories with PG-13 to his time in WWE, ECW, WCW, TNA, and more. Nothing is off limits and nothing will be held back. Thanks again for tuning in. Here he is, Wolfie D. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to Live and in Color with Wolfie D. And guess who I am? I would be Wolfie D. And my co-host, Jimmy Street. What's going on, buddy? Not much, man. What are you doing? I'm sitting in my garage right now, and it's 4 million degrees in here. Uh, mm. just the only place that I could get some peace and quiet to do these things sometimes. It <laughs> is, it, the heat index here in Somerset is over 100 already. I went out earlier, and brother, you know it's hot when the wind is hot. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. blown up like a flamethrower. Yeah. Well, down here in Charlotte, North Carolina, it's going to be a, a good hundred here today, too, man. I don't know what's going on. What do you I, mean I, down here? I don't. Are you really down here for me? When people say stuff like that, I, it, I always like they'll say geographically I here or I live down there. And in coordinates, where I am. If you ever do that, when somebody tells you that and you're like, yep. you know, up there, you live down there. Yeah. Or you live I, over. You actually live over there for me. I think. Well, how did you go? Did you go south for Myrtle Beach? Uh, probably southwest, just a little bit. Yeah. And that's South Carolina. You're in North Carolina. Yeah, and South Carolina is right below me. But <laughs> it's. I think you are. Who knows? Let's. We'll draw a map next time and figure yeah. out. I think but, it's. I think it's over there. Okay. Oh, I'm over there from you. In You're North, over yonder. Yeah, I'm over yonder. Yeah. Duh. Gosh. Yeah. Come on, man. <laughs> Jesus. You know what we're doing today, man? Oh, well, I think you've told me, and it's uh, the Ask Wolfie Anything uh, segment, session, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Ask Wolfie D Anything. And this is actually number five. It, yeah. So if you think about it, we average maybe like 15 to 20 questions a show. That's, yeah. that's a lot of, I mean, that's 200 people asking you questions. Well, I love and, it. I wish yeah, man. More. I wish we could get more. And and depending on these questions, uh, you know, the other ones have been good. Uh, but I don't know. Maybe I'm just looking for some good in depth questions. I don't know. Or I well, don't we're know. gonna. Yeah, I think we got some here. I think All we right. do. So, gonna be one that I got to pause and really think about. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I don't know. We'll see. These are good questions. I feel good about All them. Right. So, well, you know, other than that, you know, I think let's get on with the show. You ready to go? All right. We'll be right back after these messages. Hey, it's Kaylee Cuoco for Priceline. Ready to go to your happy place for a happy price? Well, why didn't you say so? Just download the Priceline app right now and save up to 60% on hotels. So whether it's Cousin Kevin's Kazoo concert in Kansas City, go Kevin! Or Becky's Bachelorette Bash in Bermuda. You never have to miss a trip ever again. So download the Priceline app today. Your savings are waiting. Go to your happy place for a happy price. Go to your happy price, price line. Hey, folks, to get your official Live It In Color with Wolfie D merchandise, go to ProWrestlingTees.com forward slash Live Wolfie D. Check it out. If you're listening to Live and in Color with Wolfie D on Apple Podcast and like what you're hearing, go ahead and leave a five-star rating. And while you're at it, write a review. Tell us what you liked. Tell us what you'd like to hear in the future. It's very important to us and always appreciated. Thanks again. All right, we're back with Ask Wolfie D Anything Part 5. And you know, you know what in I just thought of you know what I just thought of? What's that? Are there any questions that are off limits? Because it says anything. So, like, if they ask me something, like, really weird, would I have to answer it? That's up to you, homie. I mean, mm-hmm. I mean, seriously, <laughs> is there anything off limits with you? I didn't know if any of my fans were sick and twisted. I don't know. I figured Yeah. I mean, right. one dude asked you about Batista's dick. So, <laughs> yeah. I'm sure, you know, there's some <laughs> twisted dudes in the bunch, for sure. 
I don't have any clue about that. So yeah, and we're good with that too. Let's just continue <laughs> that that reputation of not knowing anything about Batista's dick. But yeah. anyway, <laughs> speaking of Batista's dick, no, I'm just kidding. Number one question of the day is from a great listener. He is a cool dude, man. He's on Twitter with us. His name's Eddie Austin, and he's at yeah. King Lawler fan on Twitter. This right. dude is an Elvis and Lawler fan, and so he asks. What was it like for Wolfie his first time in the ring with Lawler, with Dundee, and others he grew up watching? What was it like the first time in the ring with Lawler? What were you feeling? Um, I'm trying to think of the exact time that it was. It may have been a tag or something like that, but just 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 going back and thinking about what you what working Lawler is like. Uh, I want to say it was in Memphis because I remember specifically, like, you know, most guys you'll get together, you know, uh, Lawler's notorious for not getting with you until right before you go to the ring. I mean, notorious for that, which is fine. I, I'm, I'm very capable of calling it in the ring. Yeah. Um, and, but I mean, finish everything. He won't give you nothing till right before it's time to go. Nowadays, honestly, he's he's a little different than that. He'll he'll get with you a little bit early, and but he don't care. It's like the the that match uh, with me and him against uh, Doug and the Moon Dog. You know, he's like, whatever y'all want to do, just tell me. You yeah, know? So that's that's not the old law. The old lawler would sit in his dressing room in Memphis, and you know, he, like I said, five minutes before it's time to go, you're like, fuck, is he gonna say anything? <laughs> and go over there, and he's like, all right, we'll do this, this, this. All right, boom. And then you go out there and do it. And yes, it is, uh, you know, at my first time, I, I honestly have no idea what year it was when I worked him the first time. But uh, it well, it had to be 93 because I remember uh, there's a what do you call them? G.I.F. Gifts. You call them gifts or yeah. gifts? Gifts. There's yeah, one gi- of yeah. uh, me saving. I think we talked about this. Me saving the midget's life, midget D's life. Uh, Brian and and Jerry had him. In the ring with, uh, you know, one was holding his arms, one was holding his legs and did the old swing gimmick and threw him over the top rope to me. Holy and, God. and they threw him so hard that he almost went over my head. And I swear to God, I basketball rebounded a midget. I wow. Jumped, I jumped up and caught him with one arm. It was my right hand because he was going over my head. And I jumped up and snatched him like he would a rebound. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's intimidating, man. But it's also, you know, you're going out there with one of the best. So, man, it's it was just cool. And, you know, he obviously asked against, you know, Bill. It's the same same stuff with all of them, man. If it's anybody worth any recognition, the first time you go out there with somebody that you grew up watching, it's like nostalgic, man. It's like, oh, this is, this is pretty damn cool. Fuck, here I am. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. You know, I can't imagine, though. You had to be a bit of a bundle of nerves a little bit, though. <laughs> Honestly, Jimmy, man, uh, I have never been one to get nervous before a match. Never, never. And I don't know whether that's belief in my abilities or just my how comfortable I was being in the ring and still am. You know, it's just it's whatever, man. I, I can right. Whatever, whatever style I need to do, whoever I'm working, whatever their style is, I can adapt and I, I don't get nervous because if you get nervous, that's when you forget things. I very much pride myself on being one that never, I don't want to say never because you never say never, they say, but I really can't recall a time when I went to the ring and forgot anything. Like yeah. I don't remember going, Oh God, what's the finish or what's the next spot or what's this, what's that? I, I never did that. And I, I think it's cause I didn't get nervous, man. I just went out there and did what I do. That's good. That's good. Yeah. So he asked about Dundee as well. Was yeah. it, was it about to catch a knife or anything in that one? <laughs> <laughs> that was, you know, I probably worked Bill before that, uh, but yeah. So uh, once we did that angle, and well, it wasn't an angle; it was a shoot. But then once we did the angle off the shoot, uh, it was nothing but respect. We just went out there and beat the tar out of each other. Yeah. Well, that's cool. Good question, Eddie. Thank you for that. At King Lawler fan on Twitter. So our second question is another cool listener. Met him through Twitter. It's at Hot Stuff INT 007. This is Wayne G. And basically his Twitter account is dedicated to everything Hot Stuff Eddie Gilbert. Oh, yeah. Wayne, 
and always retweets our stuff, man. Really appreciate it. So you yeah. ever thought about running your own promotion? And he actually says he thinks you would be pretty good at it. So have you ever in your time thought about running your own? Well, first off, I'll tell you that he's pretty damn smart because I wouldn't. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. So when I opened the uh, House of Champions, Wolfie D's House of Champions Wrestling School, I had bigger ideas than just a uh, wrestling school as, as most guys do when they open a wrestling school, they run shows off of it, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, man, I I'm just not one of those guys that have that gift of having, uh, sponsors, money, people fall in my lap. I know plenty of guys that can just walk down the street and somebody goes, Hey, I want to sponsor some wrestling. Let's, I got all this money and let's do something. I've just never had that happen to me. And that's what I needed at that point in time. Cause I did, man, I, when I did the house of champions, I had a book. I, I read all the you know, self business stuff. I actually licensed it as an LLC, everything, man. And I wanted so much more for that. Uh, but life came into play and kind of screwed that up. But I had so many great ideas, man. Um, and, and I don't really want to go into depth of sharing what it was, but it was going to be very cool. It was going to be very cool. And like I said, I just didn't have the, I didn't have the building or the sponsorship to, to be able to do it because if I'm going to do something, I'm not going to run a, a shit show. I'm going to run something that people go, damn, that's pretty fucking cool. And yeah. I just, uh, I was, I was not able to do that. Well, around that time, you know, I can't remember if Crossfire had come and gone, but that was somebody really trying hard with a lot of money yeah. that, you know, unfortunately, maybe didn't bring in the right people to advise him all the time. But w that's another show. Go back and listen to Crossfire in the on demand section of our catalog there. But the reason I asked that question in order with this question. So this is our third question. This is from Jasper Line on Instagram. And if you had your own promotion. Yeah. What what titles would you have? Like, you know, obviously you would have a world champion, a tag team champion. What are your ideal set of titles? Well, I don't think there should be so many. Uh, I, I looked at something, I swear, I, I want to say it was yesterday, something on Facebook, and it was showing all the titles of... Uh, AEW? <laughs> yeah, or them, or ROH, and I guess they're together now, so you got yeah. titles which diminishes the value of having one, in my opinion. Uh, right, right. So uh, for me, it's a top title, heavyweight championship, I guess. Yeah. You know, of whatever your company is going to be. I believe you should have something equivalent to like an intercontinental title. Yeah, yeah. Uh, of course, a tag team championship. And then nowadays, yeah, you're going to have to have a, a women's thing, uh, one or two titles there for a single and a tag team. But other than that, man, I just don't see the point because, it, like I said, it diminishes the value of who's holding the strap. I mean, if everybody's got a strap every match, what fucking difference does it make? I don't care what you call it. Oh, he's the heavyweight champion. Oh, he's the uh, heavyweight minus two pounds champion. He's the 24-7 hardcore fucking Halloween champion. You know, I don't, I, it, it just, sure. it's, it's dumb to me if, it, because you want that person that has that title to be held, you know, in higher esteem. So, uh, the less titles you have, uh, the more it, uh, means to me. Give, let me give you my idea on this. Cause I know people aren't <laughs> listening for that, but <laughs> sure they are. Yeah. Okay. Sure. So my thoughts recently, I was just thinking if I ever did it like a PG 13 WA, you know, like we talked another episode, if we were to ever do this with a, you know, a lot of money, I would think that a world title is awesome tag title. Of course you have to have, but instead of, you know, how today's mid card and main event statuses are so interchangeable these days, basically, you know, like AJ styles, they'll put him in the main event for six months and then they'll pull him out and put him back in the mid card. Then they'll take somebody from, I think sometimes eliminating that mid card title, like the intercontinental and maybe involving a TV title. That way it doesn't muddy the waters so much of the main event guys. And then yeah. bringing in a TV title for the upper card guys that are, you know, curtain jerker guys to kind of work up to that level. I don't know. I, that was something I was, I, always, I like the TV title uh, as well. I like that. Yeah. yeah, and everything's on TV now, though. So that's the point. The point back right. then was okay. Right. This is defended on TV. Well, everything's fucking TV now. So it's a good point. 
to me that doesn't uh, hold the value that it once held. That's a great point because, you know, that was your main event. What I'm here for is great points. <laughs> that was your main event on the TV. And then you would uh, pay for it on the big, you know, big event. So, and I'm not against the, like, uh, uh, the lightweight title, Yeah, but yeah. again, it doesn't mean what it used to mean because there's a shit ton of lightweights now. So. Yeah. Because they're fighting for the heavyweight title now. It's yeah. almost like right. you need to eliminate the word heavyweight from the world title or something. I don't know. Yeah. No, that's true. That's true. That's the evolution of the business, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Man, what would you have done now if Airwolf was working now? <laughs> world heavyweight champion as opposed to being the world champion. I don't know. I kind of like the word heavyweight in there. It just makes it seem I agree. I better. Agree. Yeah, I agree. All right. So number four, our number four question is AEW don't know on Twitter. So basically, I think they're thinking about getting their kid into it or, or maybe them getting into it. But what age do you recommend to start training for pro wrestling? Because you kind of broke the you, you were one of those guys that started really early at 15. Right. You know, you already been high school wrestling and stuff. But what age right. do you recommend? Man, uh, honestly, I'd say it's whenever. I mean, your body's got to be developed and you don't want to get it like like me at almost 50 now, um, I'm very hurt because I've been doing it for a long time and I started early. Uh, but at the same time, then you got, you got guys like DDP who started late and succeeded. So I don't guess there's really a time it's it to me, honestly, I think the earlier, the better. And if you're a, a fan of it, like, like I was, I, before I ever stepped foot in a ring the first time, I kind of knew what I was going to be doing, you know, yeah. um, uh, we've talked about, you know, my parents having the forehead VCR, man, where I could, you know, slow-mo everything and just watch it. And I, I, I picked up on it. So, uh, you know, and, and I had the, uh, the big mouse stuffed animal that I used to climb up on top of my dresser and, and throw the Jerry Lawler fish drop on him on my bed. I mean, just, uh, I was doing that at 12. So yeah. man, I guess watching wrestling as a kid and, and learning and uh, because you really are learning when you watch it, you may not know it, but you are. And, um, yeah, so I don't guess there really is a an age, but at the same time, I mean, obviously you don't want to put a you know, a 11, 12-year-old kid and there were grown men uh right. in day and age that don't know what the fuck they're doing and get him hurt or killed or something. Yeah. So, you know, it is a different ball game now. Um but yeah, like I said, I I really don't have a number for that, but yeah, you know, if you're physically able and mentally capable of doing it, then go for it. Let me just say this. It takes a certain coordination too. Oh, I'll yeah. be honest. You know, when I was an eighth grader and ninth grader, I was going from five, eight to six foot. And then say I ended up six foot two, but mm -hmm. man, I, I was not very, I played ninth grade basketball and I was extremely awkward at that point because I was barely growing into my body. And I'm like, wait a second. I was just five, eight. Now I'm six foot. I don't even know how to act. Yeah, And then I ended up eventually getting my coordination together. But, you know, had I started wrestling then, they would have been like, no, it ain't going to happen, kid. Yeah, Sorry. It, it's the thing, man. I'm going to tell you, man, I have uh, trained, uh, began to train or whatever, because, you know, before House of Champions, I also ran the USWA school for a little bit. Right. Uh, and, and I've had guys and I've wrestled guys, not trained, but, uh, you know, been in the ring with guys that are. Hell, Olympic athletes, uh, fucking uh, football stars, collegiate football stars have come to my shit and stuff like that. And, and man, if if you and I know you've seen them where some of the especially football players would be like, man, I played football all my life, but wrestling was the hardest thing I've ever done. And it's it's because like, I don't care how much you can lift, how fast you are, whatever in the ring, you've got to have the footwork, the mechanics and the timing and coordination, as you just said, and that, right. those are the most important things. I don't care because fuck, I'm not the strongest guy in the world, but if I know what I'm doing in there, I could body slam a, a 300 pounder or sure. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So sure. it, it's not about like your, 
shoot athleticism. Yes, it plays a part, but one of the biggest things is timing footwork, ring awareness, where you got to be, it, you know, to not fuck everything up, man. It, it, yeah. it sounds easy, but it's not. It is so not easy. And like I said, I've been in there with guys that are, you know, collegiate athletes that really found it hard to do. And yeah, it's, I it's believe a it. Thing. And that's what I'm saying about uh, watching it. And I just knew okay, when I do this, I got to be right here. And I even taught my guys to get up a certain way. You got to feed to your, well, it's to your right, but you're leading with your left because that's where everything's going. So it just shit like that is hard for some people to get accustomed to because it's just not, it's not natural to them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's, that's perfect. I think that wraps that question there. So for our next question at backroads 420, on Twitter, who were some of your favorite guys to ride with? I loved riding with Tracy. I'm, I'm just trying to think of the people that I rode with the most. Smothers, of course, Jamie's always entertaining. Brian Christopher. <laughs> I rode a lot with Randy Hales and Frank Morrell. Frank Morrell was funny as shit. Pat Tanaka, Paul Diamond. Tracy, just funny as hell and, and almost didn't mean to be most of the time getting right. mad. There's classic stories of him beating on the steering wheel because he would get mad about certain stuff and just start going off. And it was funny. Tracy was a horrible driver, man. I'll tell you a story. Me, him, Brickhouse Brown <laughs> got pulled over coming out of a town one time. And I've got a black leather trench coat on. Then you got Brick. And then you got Tracy. You can imagine what a cop would think. Yeah. And the cop said, something to tracy about uh hey you were swerving all over there are you all right and he goes yeah man i'm a terrible driver <laughs> <laughs> that was his answer and that it, it got us let go i'm gonna use that next time <laughs> <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> All right. Well, that's amazing. I I tell you, I I would love to have had Tracy on this show, man. That's so, you know, obviously that means he would still be here and that would be the most important part, but man, anyway, number six, if, and your butts, I swear, I think people make these up, but they're real at if, and your butts on Instagram, the cruelest or meanest rib you ever saw. And you can name names or you can withdraw the names, whatever you want. If it's easier to tell the story and, yeah. and make it really, you know what I'm saying? Man, some guys are brutal with the ribs. Um, I mean, there's the classic story, and I'm not even going to say any names except for when I say crown, we're going to know who that is. Oh, yeah, man. But the took a shit in his crown. That's pretty <laughs> fucked up. But I love the guy that did it. Um, yeah. And not because of that, but, uh, right. <laughs> but yeah, I don't think it's that. Yeah. Well, and, and then another one, one of the worst things that I've ever heard of, man, um, uh, and I was not there. So I think this is true. I mean, uh, it's come from a number of different people, but I know that, uh, Brian, uh, was not well accepted when he got the WWE F whatever. Sure. Uh, and I heard that someone had uh, duct taped him to uh, the, the bathroom stall. Like he was sitting on it, doing his business, and they came in and rushed him and taped him up where he couldn't get off. Oh, my that, God. Yeah, that's pretty fucked up. <laughs> so, yeah, and I've heard of guys having their, you know, getting ready to go to the ring or something, and someone had super glued their fucking uh, boots to the floor. Uh, just man, stuff that couldn't happen these days. Cause they cried. No, this is, you know, not cool. And that yeah. kind of stuff. Uh, I'm trying to think, man. And then, I mean, I told you the one about, uh, you know, Jamie was passed out in, in the WWF jock, uh, locker room. Right. And when, and Davey put shaving cream all over him, uh, as he was laying there in the floor and the music's playing and I got to go get oh him. Oh my God. Go put him in the shower, rinse it all off and then walk him to the ring, basically do the rap by myself. But yeah, oh that's my God. dude hammered anyway. Gosh, that is horrible. Cause you were probably like, it was a rib on you too. You yeah. know? Kinda, in a way, in a way, yes, yes, it was. Because you're like going to the ring, music's playing. Oh yeah. My God. yeah. I mean, are you just, I, I don't want to really like go in depth on this too much, but were you in your mind right there? Were you like, screw those guys? Or were you like, I got to get him fixed. I can't even think about retaliation or anything right now. 
absolutely not. I, it, it never did it cross my mind that I was mad at him. Right. Uh, because I felt like Jamie brought it on himself, and that's what they do. You know what I'm right. saying? Sure. If you fuck up that much, you, you, you're going to have to have the repercussions, man. And they were masters of that shit. And so, no. Oh, I'm sure. Never, never did I. When I saw him, I was like, oh, fuck. But I picked him up and rinsed him off. And I had already knew who did it and everything. And I wasn't mad at them. No, that was Jamie's fault. Yeah, sometimes you get business if you can't handle that. Yeah, these these guys today would never survive back then. I promise. I'm sure. I believe it. I believe it. Anyway, so number seven. This is a cool listener too. He says he actually worked with you on construction at one point in your life. Mm -hmm. So his name's Bob Daniels on Facebook. He's a great listener. He puts messages on our Facebook all the time. Says he goes back and listens to the old messages. Bob, we really appreciate that, man. We shout out you here right now. So it's a pretty cool question, I think. He says your ideal fatal four way, any time period, any four wrestlers. Mm -hmm. I guess he would say with you, but maybe we'll do with or without you. But anyway, I, I. think it would be more fun if it were you in the fatal four way and then you find three other guys all right so fatal four way is just the four way singles match correct no. yeah exactly and 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 to me on those and i done told you my thoughts on three ways four ways right i like it man i just don't like it i think it's i think it's awkward um yeah yeah it's a it's a way uh to put a I guess you would say a new match into play or something like that. Right. But I just, it's hard. I don't know. It, I just don't like them really. Uh, and I don't know why. I just don't. The, the first time I was ever introduced to it, I'm like, eh. yeah. It's hard to follow the, uh, just the basis of wrestling and heat, comeback, all that kind of stuff. When a three way or a four way is just, it's basically just people doing moves and okay, I'll save this one. I'll save that one. So it's just, I don't know to me, not my style. Of course, like we've said, I can adapt to whatever and I can do it, but I just, I don't like it in the fact that there's no, I mean, think about it. You got four guys in there and everybody's just doing stuff. At what point in that match are the fans able to get emotionally involved? Right. I feel right. like are because there's no heat on someone there's no sympathy for no one it's just video game shit right so, all right so back to the original question uh if i had to throw people in there if it was me in there i'd love to have randy savage kurt henning and road dog all right boom <laughs> there it is all right bob that's a great match man so <laughs> think about that there you go so number eight on the list today is anton bidet and this is an email so i'm not going to give out his email here but favorite wrestling gimmicks whether made money or not so maybe you know like fantasio didn't make money up in wwf but uh, you know what were some of your favorite gimmicks whether they were successful or not Thank you for saying, uh, Dell. So Spellbinder, love that gimmick. I fucking love that gimmick. And if it had been on me, I'd have got it over. Because um, I loved everything he did. And I used to tell him stuff, too. And, you know, I don't know if we covered this when we were talking to him. But I was like, dude, you got to do this. You got to do this. And he, honestly, he was a little against some of the, the magic stuff. He wanted to be a wrestler. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. And, right. Oh, you got to do this. This could be the, like... I, I, you know, he did the the thing where the cane would pop out of his hand from nowhere. Yeah, yeah. God, a fucking finish every match, man. <laughs> you know, yeah. most guys are digging in their tights and pulling out a chain. You fucking make a cane appear out of nowhere and whack them, boom, finish, done. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Anyway, uh, that one. Uh, I also loved Papa Shango. Yeah. Uh, Great gimmick. And, and, and I mean, of course, we know he got over his Godfather, but I love Papa Shango. Um, favorite gimmicks, favorite gimmicks, uh, of, of course, road warriors. And that got over. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, let me think, let me think, let me think. I'm trying to think of one that like didn't get over that. I liked, I don't know. There were the, the yeah. God, hard question. Cause I really can't think of everybody, but there were so many that were like, I love the eighties theme of whatever job someone does. Let's put a gimmick on them. You had a police. Yeah. You had a fucking trash man. You had, I mean, just that was the eighties. Let's, let's think of a job and make a wrestler out of him. And yeah, some totally. Of that, totally. Some of that stuff I loved, some of it didn't, uh, repo man. And 
<laughs> you know, I really didn't care for that one. But again, it was just one of those things where Vince was just thinking up different ideas. Obviously, Undertaker was awesome. Right. Uh, even when he first came out, we all know, you know, the the mark that he's made on the business, no pun intended. Uh, but it, the Undertaker was awesome when I first seen it. And I was like, yes, because I was always a fan. You know this. And the listeners, if they listen, they know this. I love over the top stuff. And that's yeah. what wrestling was to me. And, uh, you know, today, oh, MMA. Okay, if I want to watch MMA and I want to see people uh, in, you know, little booty shorts kicking the shit out of each other, I'm going to watch that. But if I want to watch wrestling, I want to be fucking entertained and I want to see over-the-top shit. I want to see a live-action superhero show. That's what I want to see. Yeah, me too. I agree. That's great. So the, the next question is from Ben Martin on Facebook. Now, Ben, when we said ask Wolfie anything, Ben really took advantage of this, and I, oh. I really appreciate it. He really went in. He asked us like four questions. He didn't just play around. And then he went back and asked more, so I would write them down and you know gather them in my list here, and then he would add another one. I'm like, okay, got to get another one from Ben here. So, <laughs> but he, so really appreciate you, Ben. That's awesome. Thank you for being a great listener. So were you working in Power Pro when Doug Gilbert cut the infamous Brian Christopher promo and your thoughts on it? Um, I can't remember. I mean, I know exactly what you're talking about, and I think I was. Uh, 100% I can't say. Uh, but yeah, that's just Doug, man. And uh, you give Doug a live mic, if he gets mad, he's going to say it. And that yeah. was just the thing. Uh, like I said, I can't remember if I was there or not. And, and I also know this, uh, that Doug and Brian... We're the bestest of friends. So, right. uh, you know, the shoot on whatever, you know, they were best friends, man. Yeah. I think I know this answer. So did you ever witness a full on Jim Cornette meltdown? He calls it a corny meltdown, either in Smoky Mountain, WWF, OVW. Did you ever notice one where he just fell to pieces? Uh, I've seen it uh, at his house. <laughs> <laughs> I used to stay with him all the time, and I'd see him freak out over different stuff. Uh, and, and I think he even freaked out on me one time at OBW when I did the dumbest thing that I, you know, probably cost me a lot, man. Uh, the, Jim Ross had come in, and he he looked at me and he said, and I, and again, this is one of those things we've talked about. Uh, right. He said he said Wolfie, we're looking at you. This is when I first started doing Slash. He said we're looking at you again, and we like what we see. Please don't shoot yourself in the foot. Well, I have a good aim on my foot usually. Man. Uh, and uh, went out there. I was going to do an interview. It was OVW. And my idea was just, I forget who I was working or what we were building up to. And I, I was going to take the mic and, you know, in the interview, start going off and then beat myself in the head with the microphone and get color. Well, that's not the easiest thing to do in K Favorite without like a shoot beating myself to a bloody pulp. And so I tried to get color and hell, they they went black on me because I kept going. I did get the color, but it was like not what I envisioned. <laughs> and this is where I they went black on me. So I fucking got pissed and I came through the uh the curtain and I kicked the door in. I'm not sure if I've told this one either, but Brock was on the other side of the door and I about took his head off with the door from where I kicked it so hard. He was like just right on the other side. He didn't say nothing, nothing happened. But I, you know, in retrospect, I'm like, fuck, I'm so glad <laughs> hit him with that door. <laughs> uh, so anyway, yeah, Corny was kind of mad at me over that, but yeah. Gotcha. That's a, actually a, a first on the podcast. You've never told that story. So, oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. And I yeah. can't believe, dude, if he would have been, if Brock would have been about, a foot closer to the door when I kicked it open, it would have slapped him right in the face. Yeah. And I don't know what would have happened. After wow. that. I kind of do. But. Yeah, no doubt. It would have been a fight anyway. So, you know, the best riot or fan incident and a story with that. So he put best, but I mean, these are typically not great. So is yeah. there a, is there a riot you've seen that was just out of this world crazy or well, again, um, yeah, the Mississippi right. I think we've talked about that. Yeah, I mean that's the that's the one thing that where I was legitimately like kind of like I don't want to say scared, but I was like, oh shit, 
this is going down. Right. And it was the deal where we were in Mississippi, obviously Mississippi, right? Yeah. Uh, and Jamie, it was me, Jamie, Brickhouse, and uh, Atomic Dog, another black guy. So we were wrestling. I can't remember everybody. I know for sure Terry Golden. I don't know if you remember him. Uh, I think Steve Dahl was in it, too. Anyway, long story short, uh, actually, long story, a little bit more of a story. Uh, we we come to the ring, all four of us, and Jamie gets on the mic, as he usually does, and, and there's no security here, none. No security, no cops, no nothing, and it's a National Guard armory, and the fucker is packed. You couldn't get another motherfucker in there. Yeah. And uh, so, anyway, Jamie gets on the mic, and there's a guy... Uh, old redneck white guy in the back and uh, he's holding a baby that is of mixed uh, race and that's the Jamie opening right there oh. and he he tells the guy he said on the mic he says hey redneck it looks like brick house snuck in your house oh my gosh right 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 so the guy puts the kid down oh my gosh. and starts charging the ring all right. You know, National Guard Army, he ain't got that far to go. Right. Uh, but by the time he gets to get in the ring, I think he thought, this is probably not a good idea. Yeah. Overall. So all of a sudden he falls down and starts like quivering. Like, I think he was faking like a heart attack or something. But you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. oh, I'm fixing to do this, but no. So then... There's a few other people that I guess felt sorry for him and they start jumping in the ring. Oh man. Yeah. And so oh, man. people were doing this and the one guy that I'll never forget, man, this motherfucker, he had to be, I don't know, six, four, six, five, man. He was big. He had on, uh, overalls, bald headed, just big corn fed country motherfucker, man. Yeah. And uh, Atomic Dog, he used to wear uh, a chain like Junkyard Dog, one of those big, thick things. So anyway, this guy's standing there, and there's people throwing stuff. There's people coming in. Brick's fighting. Jamie's fighting. I'm fighting. Well, I see this big motherfucker get in there, and he's, I can't remember. He's looking at, I don't know, Jamie or something. He's not looking at me. And so from the side, like, you didn't even see me coming, and I take, like, two to three steps, like a run sort of punch thing. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. I hit him right in the side of the head. You think you went down? No. Nah, he didn't. He didn't go down. <laughs> and I got a good punch. I, got yeah, good I know. Punch. I know you do. And this motherfucker just basically no sold me. Hawk he hawked me. That's what he yeah. did. He hawked me. He fucking looked at me. And then fucking uh, atomic dog, he had that chain wrapped up double, okay? And fucking, woo, wrapped it around this motherfucker's head. He wow. still didn't go down. But he had the smarts because his head was getting all swelled up from getting hit and shit. <laughs> and I'm yeah. serious. He had, yeah. he had knots all over his head. But he didn't go down. He just, he got out of the ring. He's, it, it, I think it was like, all right, I'm 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 done. I'm not going to take no more of these licks. Right. So he got out of the ring. Uh, I've still to this day got a scar up under my lip that everybody thinks I was uh, dumb and got a snake bite piercing. And I didn't, it's from where uh, during that thing, like all of a sudden I turned and someone from about the third row threw a chair and it caught me right in the lip. And uh, so boom, then, the, then the baby faces, Terry, uh, Steve, all them, obviously we're not having a match at this point. We're yeah. not having a match. And they come out, smartly telling the fans we got them we got them we got them and they start nailing us and they nail us all the way back to the dressing room yeah that's where we stayed <laughs> yeah your match was actually with the crowd <laughs> you just yeah had, yeah <laughs> i think they went over so. yeah i think they did man that is nuts oh man so the next question he has this is actually interesting he showed visual proof of this he says the uswa tag belts of course you know you're a 16 time uswa tag team champion were actually the usa tag belts 
that Ron Fuller used in Knoxville. How did they end up in Memphis? So he basically showed us that I think it was maybe it was either Ron Fuller himself or somebody in the photo was wearing the USA title and it was a it was the exact plate and everything. It just had a different belt color. Do you know the story on this? I have no freaking idea unless uh, because I know they changed the colors of the USWA titles. I'm not sure where they came from. I'm not a, you know, I'm not a historian, Uh, but originally they were, I want to say black and then they changed them to red leather. Yeah. uh, Because they were so fucked up, man. Me and Jamie were carrying around belts that like were missing a plate on the side and shit at first. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I think Randy got that done and fixed it. So I'm not sure if that, I mean, maybe it is. Maybe he knows more than I do. I, uh, back in those days, man, I, uh, there was no internet. There was no right. and I see dirt sheets and just whatever, man. I'm here. I'm the champ and whatever. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I think we'll have D- Dave Milliken on in the future. We've talked about that. And we'll t- ask him about that. I know those were probably Reg Park belts, but he is the ace of belts. So he knows what's up with yeah. belts. So. And that's a really cool question, Ben. Thank you for that. Because I mean, that's, you know, that's good info there. Let's take a quick time out and get a word from one of my dope ass sponsors. And we'll be right back with more Live and in Color with Wolfie D. Hey folks, this is Wolfie D here. And if you are looking to buy or sell a home in Tennessee or Southern Kentucky, you're gonna wanna call my buddy, the rock star realtor, Benji Bowie. And you say, Wolfie, how do I get in touch with this rock star? Well, you can call him directly at 615-390-8216. You can go to his website, bowiehomes.com. That's B-U-I-E homes.com. Or you can email him at benbowie34 at gmail.com. When you need a home, you need the rock star realtor. Benji is a member of Exit Realty's Garden Gate team in Gallatin, Tennessee. Jade Roper, the Southern Closer, is here for you if you're looking to buy a home and need the best deal on a mortgage loan. Now, while Jade's heart and soul is helping that first-time home buyer, it doesn't matter if it's your first, second, or the dream home you've always wanted. She is there to help. Jade knows the area, the market, and she's invested in your community. She'd love to help you with all your home financing needs and will make it as easy as possible. All this makes her the official mortgage lender of the Live and in Color with Wolfie podcast. Contact her today at 615-681-4282. Email at jroper at primeres.com or just visit the southerncloser.com. NMLS 1794506. Licensed in Alabama, Florida, Georgia, Kentucky, and Tennessee. Powered by PRMI, NMLS 3094. PRMI is an equal housing lender. It's only a kick. A jump, a block, it's only a serve, it's only a tackle, a run, it's only for the fans. After all, it's only pressure. You got this. Adidas. Okay, so the next question, another awesome Twitter listener, Macaroni, he's at Hizuti Mizark. If you hadn't been bitten by the wrestling bug, what other career would you have succeeded in? Man, uh, I probably, uh, like in school and everything like that, I I, I love art. I might have done something with that. Uh, It's hard to say because I did quit school. I quit school. Right. I got right. a GED later in life, but I quit school for wrestling. Yeah. Uh, uh, and yes, uh, you know, I got good art skills and all that kind of stuff. Uh, later in life, you know, you know what intrigues me the most? What's that? People. Yeah. And I think, and I'm very good at it. I've been told that. Uh, I think sociology would have been a thing for me. Yeah, I could see that. I could no, totally see that. 
totally. I'm good at like I can read people, and I also just know I don't know. Yeah, I'd be good at that. So uh, the short answer is I'd always be a wrestler, maybe an artist, but also maybe a sociologist or something like that. Yeah, I got a friend that does that. That's awesome. That would be a good career. What if I say something stupid like um, popcorn popper? Thinking about being a trash man Duke early the dumpster, on. or I was yeah Duke the dumpster. We just had him on, uh, yeah. or if I was saying oh I'd be a repo man, or I'd be a big boss man cop. <laughs> I mean I'd be a, a Paul Bearer, you know, working with dead bodies, and I don't know what what else could I do? You could be a warrior of the road. A warrior of the road, yeah. Yeah. And that's until cool until you became ultimate, you know, yeah. or the modern day. Anyway, all right. So our next question, that's a good that's a good answer, I think. So number eleven, Brandon Wheeler, another great listener on Facebook here. Now this one's gonna be funny because I can't wait to hear your impersonation one more time. So any good Tommy Rich stories, any chance we could have him on the show? What about some wildfire? Man, I would love to have Tommy on the show. Yeah. But Tommy's just that guy. I was in his hometown two weeks ago. He wouldn't yeah. answer. Yeah. Had some of the greatest matches I've ever had in my life with him. Uh, taught me a lot. Yeah. Um, man, Tommy is just a different breed. Right. He's totally a different breed. Yeah. So there's, there's one day that, uh, Tommy comes to my house in Nashville and I can't remember what town we were going to. I can't remember. I think Doug maybe had to pick us up or something like that, but <laughs> this was in Nashville off of uh, Stewart's ferry. And I lived in these apartments. Yeah. And if you walk through the woods, <laughs> you can come out on the main street there and right across there, there was this little bar and that's where we were going to get picked up at. Well, okay. if anybody knows Tommy, he's always got his beer with him. So yeah. here goes me and Tommy. <laughs> it's time to get picked up. And I'm telling him, I said, the, the, the woman that I was with at the time was not cool. And uh, so I said, man, we got to go out the back. I said, we got to go through the woods and we got to go over there and fucking get picked up. And he's like... <laughs> Oh, God damn, Wolfie, are you fucking kidding me? I'm like, oh, no, I'm not fucking kidding. I said, we either get out of this house or I promise when she comes here, she's probably going to call the police or something. Oh, God damn. So Tommy's got a rolling cooler. Like, he's got wheels on it. Oh, and man. At our wrestling bags. So we go out the back of my apartment and we walk through the woods like a trail, like we're hiking. Me and yeah. Tommy are hiking. Through the woods with a beer cooler and wrestling bags. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. And then uh, we come out, you know, it, it, it escapes into uh, the, the main road there. And then you walk across the street and there's that little bar and we got picked up. But that that's a funny story, me and Tommy. He that always told me about that. You motherfucker, you made me walk through the goddamn woods and not... <laughs> Yeah. Uh, do do the impersonation of him when he would try to wake you up at 7 a.m. Hey, hey, pussy, <laughs> wake up, drink a beer, you fucking pussy, wake up here, <laughs> here, here, drink it. I remember back in, in Saw at Southern All Star Wrestling in Millersville when we were working together out there. Doug and Tommy were also working there at the same time. And you had been working the Cerebus gimmick, or maybe just about to happen into the Cerebus. And I was still working the Prince Omar Alcazan gimmick. And I would oftentimes, whenever good music was played there. I had a cane. It was like an orthopedic cane too. It was so lame because I broke my good cane <laughs> and uh, I had a bad cane and I would play it like a guitar, just an like air guitar. And you know, yeah. when I was like not thinking and I remember one time Tommy was sitting there and Doug was like talking to somebody else and he's like slapping Doug on the back and he said, Hey Doug, Hey Doug, look there. Oh, Sheiky's playing the guitar. <laughs> <laughs> 
Isn't that weird? But anyway, Tommy we got to have Tommy on. We got to have Doug on. I, I, I really, I really, I'm going to double down on that. We've got to I sometimes. Love to do so. it. I love to yeah. do it. All right. So number 12, we've got Steve Malbasa on Facebook. How on earth did you survive the doomsday device? Is there a safe way to fall from that position? Now, let me say this before you answer. I've seen animal do it two ways. I've seen the grab the calves and flip them. And I've seen the him falling back with them. So talk about that a little bit. Okay. Him falling back. uh, Can you tell me who he did that to? I can't. I can't. But it was, it It was was probably, it was probably somebody older and respectable, right? Okay. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. I think you're right. So that's, that's probably the thing they were like, yeah, I'll take it, but goddamn, man, I ain't taking no flip. Right. <laughs> Fucking, if you'll throw me on my back, it's cool. Uh, because I, I've seen that too. But um, honestly, man, it's, it's a, uh, it's not that big of a deal. I mean, it kind of is, I guess, because when animal picks you up, he's, I don't know, six, six, one, something like that. Sure. So head is, 10 feet in there. Yeah. Yeah. Cause of your, you know, you got to so and yeah. Uh, and then you look at what's coming at you. <laughs> it's, it's, it's Hawk it's right. on the top rope with like a mean look on his face. Yeah. Uh, and, and I don't care if he likes you or not. I mean, he's got to do his move. Right. So, um, uh, yeah. Then Hawk comes screaming at you. Nah, <laughs> boom. <laughs> Um, uh, and I, I just, I just, I don't know. Uh, I just learned to take it. Just go. Uh, that's the only yeah. thing you do on moves like that. If, if I don't go, um, uh, it's probably going to suck worse. If I go, it's going to be good. And like I told you, uh, at WrestleMania, uh, I was on, uh, med shoulders and Jamie got lucky enough to be on animal shoulders. Yeah. Ahmed had no clue how to fucking help you out or whatever. So when Hawk comes for the double, right? A device, you know, Jamie gets flipped over nicely. Sure. I don't. Oh, no. I, I, I got to take it and go. And I landed on my fucking head and shoulder. And, you know, oh, it's not a yeah. shampoo, but I landed on my head and shoulders and I didn't have dandruff. Yeah. Yeah, because he probably didn't even push your calves. I imagine, did he? Not, no, he didn't. He didn't. Mm-mm. Yeah, <laughs> nope. I could almost see him holding on to your legs right there. You know, <laughs> don't go. <laughs> you're not going anywhere, man. That's rough. Well, I've just seen it done both ways, but I think you're right. Whoever was on top of Animal at that time, I don't know if it was because of Animal's back issues that he quit doing it that way. But I think he would alternate no, methods. Oh, no, absolutely. You know? it's not, it, it it had nothing to do with his back issues. I promise. It, yeah. it had with the person because the only one I've ever seen where they did it that way was I and I can't remember cannot remember and I'm gonna lie right now all right yeah yeah I think it was like Arn or just just somebody that big you know what I mean right right exactly and, you're right no don't hurt me man you know what I mean and not that they wouldn't take it because they were pussies but just nah man drop yeah. me on the back I'm not doing yeah. that Live, it might kill me. Right, right. Okay, so Pete on Instagram, we've got, I know you worked Cahagas for the NWA title. Was there ever talk in that time period about you winning the NWA title? I don't think so. Um, I really can't remember, Jimmy. Um, yeah. I thought I should have. Yeah, I agree. I think so too. I, I was thinking that at the time because there were there were guys that were winning it that were absolutely credible champions to win it, no question. But yeah. you know, you seem to fit right in that to me. You know, yeah. Um, but again, it was just Wolfie D not being in the click, man. I think right. that's buzz. Because I honestly, uh, the the show and you were there that night, right? Yeah, I, mean, I was. Yep. I had a band brought in. I know. You know yeah, what I mean? It was, was awesome. And the match itself was was cool as fuck because I was over. I mean, it, right. it, honestly, and, and this is not me tooting my horn, but I built this. I talked to them and I said, hey, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. And then let's get here. 
let me bring out this band and let me do this. And it, it yeah. was over. It was fucking over. Dude, if you remember watching that match, it was almost like a shit, like a dusty thing, man, where I didn't even have to lock up with dude and they were fucking cheering for me. You know, it was oh, one of totally, those totally. where let's go slow and let's taper off. Yeah, totally. The next question here is at NWA wrestling fan and it's at fan underscore NWA. So this guy's a huge fan of the NWA. His Twitter page is dedicated to NWA stuff. So I've got a, a side note question with this. So the initial question was, what did it mean to you to win the NWA tag titles with Brian Lee? And my side note question is this, did it mean more that it was the NWA titles or was it the circumstances, time and place? Meaning they could have been TNA titles and it would have meant just as much. Absolutely, Jimmy. Neither one of those things you just said mattered to me. Okay, okay. Um, because, because, man, I'm just telling you, man, brought up in the business, had been in there that long. Titles don't mean nothing to me. Sure. And I know now they do and everybody, oh, I'm the champion. Uh, in our age and day, and you can go back and ask anybody that is, uh, you know, of my era or even before, you're a mark if you like, we're, oh, I gotta have a championship, I gotta have a title. Well, yeah, I, I never thought that I needed one to be good, but at the same time, yes, that's awesome. It's very awesome to be the champions because, in the public eye, yeah, these are the best, sure, sure. But as as opposed to, you know, in the back and the boys and all that kind of stuff, if you're a good wrestler, you're a good wrestler. You ain't got to have a fucking belt. Right. But uh, like I said, uh, that that was cool. And I think I've I've told you this before. Uh, they we were not even supposed to be the champions. It was just kind of supposed to be like a one week thing. I think they didn't have an idea. Right. And so put it on us. It worked. And we had great matches. In the campus. So, um, man, yeah, I mean, titles are cool. Titles yeah. are cool. It's, it's cool to say, man, when you say to me, 16 times USWA tag team champions, <laughs> that feels good. That feels good. It also feels good to say TNA original. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Because I've always been a tag team guy. And so, what that means is, I have done good as a tag team wrestler throughout these 30 years or whatever. So yeah, it does feel good, but it doesn't mean anything. Cause it's, I mean, it's just, and you got to have somebody out there looking out for you. If they think I'm good, they think I'm good. Yeah. It was a validation, right? Of your, yeah. of your guys, hard work of the quality matches that you and Brian Lee were putting with people like AMW, like all the other teams that you yeah. guys worked, you know? So that I yep. think was the the probably the part that meant most. And that's my assumption from knowing you these years, you know. But anyway, so our last question, and this is a bit of a ringer because this is from at GMBMPW, and this one is from the Give Me Back My Pro Wrestling Podcast. Mm. <laughs> Ever heard of them? <laughs> yeah. So we recently did a did a show on factions. Okay. So our show is about factions and all the great factions starting from, you know, the moon dogs, the first family with Jimmy Hart on into the bullet club and all the things that are in between that. And the question that I thought of that I thought would be fun. So let's just say that Crockett was Memphis and Memphis was Crockett. So in Crockett, you know, they had the four horsemen, which is one of the most legendary factions of all time. Yeah. If you took the horseman recipe and put it in Memphis, USWA, not CWA, but USWA, who is your four horsemen of the USWA? Hmm. Um, pure time alone. I mean, do, do they have to be from the same era or what? Well, I think so, but. Then we can do one of all time, but I think let's try to do one in in one era if we can. All that right. way, it's it's a cohesive. You gotta year. have you gotta have Lawler, obviously. You gotta have Dundee, uh, Jimmy Valiant, Austin Idol. 
Okay, so you're kind of going CWA, right? You're kind of going Memphis. So, okay, as well. all right. So you uh, give me a year then. Give me a year. Well, that's uh, so let's just I'm going to here was mine from the USWA and I'll explain why. So I had Lawler as the flair. OK, I had Doug and Tommy and you're going to probably straighten me up on this. I had Doug and Tommy as the Arn and Tully. And then I had Jeff Jarrett as the Barry Wyndham in that idea. Or uh, you uh, could uh, do uh, the Bill uh, Dundee uh, as Oli, you know, that kind of thing. No. Uh, I think you did good right there. I just didn't know the years. I was just trying to think of right you know, this legends or whatever. I guess that was a Mount Rushmore question. For totally. You. Totally. Yeah. That is a great Mount Rushmore. If you think about it, dude, cause Lawler, Dundee, Jeff, Jimmy Valiant. Jeff, and, Jeff yeah. was so good too. I mean, Jeff had his, uh, you know, stuff that people knock about him or whatever, but the, in the ring, it, it, Jeff's good. Jeff's yeah. very good. Yeah. One and, and we're gonna do a episode that I threw at you, and we'll just tease this right now, fans. Yeah, yeah. we're gonna do a top ten best punchers, and I may or may not have Jeff in my top ten. Maybe, maybe not. Right, but here's the thing: the top ten best punchers. That's gonna start a series for us. That basically. You know, a lot of times Wolfie and I, we come up with these shows together. You'll say something and I'll elaborate on it, or I'll say something and you'll elaborate on it. But this one, I think, is a total Wolfie creation. So, you know, he came to me the other day and he's like, man, let's do something top 10. And I said, okay, that's cool. I sent him a text and I said, for a whole show. And he took it as like I was questioning that. <laughs> and I said, no, I think it'd be a great whole show. I was just wanting to clear that up. So, yeah, we're going to start a new series called top 10 or whatever it evolves into and our first one is is going to be the top 10 punchers and you'll be hearing that one soon we promise yeah so. and i want uh i want the people to send in something that now they've heard this yeah please. i want to see what they think because i will argue with you all day long jimmy you know that Totally. And that's a great idea. Get active on our Facebook page, Twitter, or Instagram at Live Wolfie D. You get on the pages at Live Wolfie D, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, whatever, and put your top 10 ideas down too. If you want to, w- once we drop the top 10 punchers idea, you don't like it, jump in. Wolfie's a great debater. You know, he, he might even be the master debater shut the fuck up (laughs) yeah i I am the masturbator though i'm pretty good at it (laughs) all right well that's pretty cool man what do you say we do a little current affairs even though it takes two hands i'm pretty good at it (laughs) and with that folks current affairs sponsored by coach's corner sports grill dj hit the music it's a current affair it's a current affair All right, we're back with Current Affairs, sponsored by Coach's Corner Sports Grill. And our first one is is obvious, you know, the Iron Man, <laughs> Cody Rhodes. So wow. here's the deal. He tore his pec training, yeah. and he still wrestled in a Hell in a Cell match. And honestly, folks are calling it match of the night, could be one of the matches of the year. And they're saying that. Well, they said nine months, but some people are saying he may be out to the rumble. So basically the deal with Cody was, is he was on a direct path for Roman Reigns. And they were going to probably end up putting those unified titles on Cody because Roman is about to dip for a bit because he's going to go make movies or something. So that being said, Cody is now out to the rumble, which... You know, I would say we'll surpass Roman Reigns being out. So they'll have to figure something else out to get him back in this picture. But anyway, man, just talk about the injury, dude. I mean, that's horrible. Yeah, it's terrible, man. Uh, Being someone that has, I've ripped uh, my bicep, the same side he did. Uh, It was his pack. I know that. Uh, But I ripped my bicep, uh, the outer head of it. Phew. Relieved a lot of pain, actually, as funny as that sounds. I've also ripped my right arm tricep completely off the bone. Uh, That surgery uh, reattached. 
also tore my quadricep on my left knee off my kneecap. So, yeah. Uh, oh, and I watched that because when I saw, you know, what everybody was saying about, you know, he's going out there and doing this, whatever. Man, that's pretty ballsy. It's pretty fucking ballsy because I'm, I'm going to tell you from from having ripped muscles and, and, and I'm not sure what. God, it looked awful, man, because, uh, I mean, that you understand that that purple means he's bleeding from everywhere you're looking at. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not sure. I haven't heard the prognosis or whatever. I don't know. Did he tear it completely or was it a muscle tear or tendon tear? I don't know. But to go out there and have a match like that, man, was Dude, dude's got my props, man. Like, seriously. I, yeah. I've been out there and done stuff that I didn't, I probably shouldn't have done it, man. Uh, but yeah, that was awesome, man. And, and what a good match. And I loved, I really loved the way they turned it into a cowbell match. Yeah. I yeah. mean, that's just, that's great thinking. And I don't know, I guess Cody's that smart. I guess he is because that was cool. That was yeah. cool. Into yeah. the, and for him to do all the stuff that he did with a torn peck bleeding all over himself. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's pretty, uh, that's old school. I love it. Yeah, it is. And that's, it was nuts. And I think it was completely off the bone is what they said. So yeah, that was a yeah. full tear. I can't imagine that. But that being said, Cody, we wish you a speedy recovery. We enjoy watching your matches. So the next question, it's another champion or considered champion, but another injury that's put him out. So CM Punk, he won the title at double or nothing. And then on that very Wednesday night, so he wrestled the Saturday night for double or nothing. And then the Wednesday after that, he wrestles in a free match on TV on AEW Dynamite and he injures his foot. I don't have the exact dates that he's going to be out, but he will be out. And now AEW is crowning an interim AEW champion while he's out. What do you think of that interim idea? Basically, it's a placeholder for the guy. And then when they come back, it's an automatic angle. Do you like yeah. that? I, I, I think it's stupid. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly. Yeah. I mean, yeah. if he can do it, then, uh, man, throw you it relinqu- up in a tournament or something like that. I don't know. That's stupid. You relinquish the title and then you work him back in the, when you yeah, come. Yeah. You don't know what's, yeah. Dude, you, do it. Yeah. Cause you don't know what's going to be going on when he's coming back. It could be some dudes caught fire like MJF maybe. And you know, he's not in the picture anymore. That's the problem with injuries and why guys work through so many of them is they didn't want to lose their spot. Right? Absolutely, man. You, you work through it, man. I'm telling you even so much more back then you worked through anything. You worked through anything, man. I, I, I went to the ring. Not sure if we talked about this. I always say that, that this should be the title of the show. (laughs) <laughs> we'll be not sure if I talked about this. Uh, but man, I went out there one night with a weight belt on because my back was so screwed up. And uh, yeah. I was yeah. working uh, Brian Christopher and uh, like in his comeback. <laughs> and I had a, like I said, a weight belt on. All I could do was in his comeback when he punched me, I lay down on the second rope and bounce up and take another one instead of flat back in it to the floor. Cause I knew I couldn't get back up. So Jeez. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, that's nuts, man. And y'all are tougher than anybody can imagine. So we are not a gossip show. We are not a dirt sheet show. We talk crap, but Wolfie usually rips on himself before he rips on anybody else. (laughs) So what we're about to talk about here is not us ripping on this person. Let's just make that said. But unfortunately and sadly, Jeff Hardy was arrested again June 13th, early a.m., He was driving while license was suspended, violation of restrictions, and unfortunately, his third DUI offense. His hearing was on the 14th at 1.30 at this time of recording. We don't have any more information, but man, it's a sad story, you know? Super sad, man. Uh, I love Jeff, and um, 
fuck, I've been there, man. I know, I know. And uh, it just kind of sucks, man. Just, I mean, <sighs> come on, man. He he was getting his thing going again. Yeah. Beating him and man, it just sucks, man. It just sucks for him. Well, you know, and the fans, man, I hate to say it, but the fans are really toxic on some things sometimes, you know, because, and, you know, if you guys out there, listeners, feel this way about it, it, that's all up to you. But I would just say, before you judge somebody that is clearly dealing with something, you know, sometimes we get ourselves in a position to where nothing we do is right. And it's almost like, the world is saying, no, this ain't the direction you should be going in, yeah. you know, and, and it corrects it. And sometimes that correction is harsh and it includes some sort of penalties, fines, jail time, whatever. Obviously we don't want any of that for Jeff. You know, you've never hidden that you've also dealt with addiction in the past. The thing yeah. that we want people to understand is you know, they're wagging their finger at him saying he should have taken WWE up on the rehab offer. WWE is looking like they were doing the right thing now versus everybody was saying Jeff was like, no, I don't need it. But at the same time, you know, maybe they saw something or maybe they just have a strict policy of, look, if you've got an issue, we're going to fix it. We'll help you fix it. But to continue on here, you will have to do this. Maybe they knew more. It did kind of seem like Jeff was like, no, I don't have to follow your rules. Fire me, whatever. He was getting his stuff going again. You're exactly right. Like you said, him and Matt back together, rocking AEW, probably on the way to the tag titles. Long story short, this happens. What do you think happens from here for him, man? Man, um, it sucks, honestly. Uh, yeah, yeah. He's going to have to do some time, I think. I don't know. Uh, I don't know Florida laws. Uh, right. I know laws where I live and stuff like that. And, you know, I don't got the money he's got. But uh, I really think, like, uh, he's going to have to do some time over this. And that sucks, man. It sucks because he's such a incredible athlete. And yeah. One of a kind. A superstar. Yeah. Uh, that's the thing that people don't understand, man. When you're, oh, man, just to be able to do what we do uh, and to be able to do it on a level that he does it. Yeah. It's, it, it just, uh, man. Yeah. It hurts, man. It hurts. And uh, I can't, I can't sit here and say that, you know, alcohol or drugs is the way to make it better or something like that. But, right is kind of the thing, you know? Yeah. I mean, you know, I've dealt with addiction. Like I've never hidden that I did for a long time, but that was when I was deep in it. You know, the things that we do to our body when we think we're just partying turns into something that eventually controls our life. You know what I'm saying? So I, I know, you know what I'm saying? You know, Absolutely. you, I remember being told, do the drugs. Don't let the drugs do you. And I was totally that person. I let the drugs do me. And, right. you know, obviously as a person that's beyond that now in my life, I just fully say, don't do drugs. And that sounds super square, <laughs> but I don't care, man. Don't do anything that is man-made in my personal opinion. That's just the way I'll go with it, you know? So Jeff, we're pulling for you, man. Nothing but the best from Live and in Color with Wolfie D right now. I want to kind of end this one on a high note. I don't want to end this one on that note because that's kind of, it's a sad situation and, and I, yeah. you know, don't want to make light of it. So I'm going to add one to our current affair list here. Recently on Twitter, Snoop Dogg, has apparently given his professional blunt roller a raise because he's saying basically inflation. So it's now somewhere near 50,000 a year. And so basically he's explained it before. He says, you can smoke all you want. You've got to have it ready when I want it. And also it's got to be good, a good role. And then, you know, he says that you get free clothes, you get to go places with him. You're basically his assistant, but your job is the professional blunt roller for 50 a year. So it's probably more like a hundred or 150 with all the stuff you get. And my question in this is actually not about Snoop Dogg, but who was the best cigarette roller that you knew? Me. You? 
Yeah. I love it. That's what we mean. Um, maybe Jamie, but he taught me. Yeah. For some reason, I could see you two being able to roll a joint in the most weird places. Like I could see you almost like you're balancing on something and you've got to, I don't know, you know, the most ridiculous situations. Reach over and take the wheel with my hand and drive, you know, and he would roll one or vice versa. (laughs) And, And I'd do it. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. I just can imagine that. Mine <laughs> looks like a cigarette. That's awesome. Because, you, know? you know, they got like these rolling machines now that everybody uses, and yeah. that takes the fun out of it, right? Yeah, I don't need that. Yeah, well, you know, one time we'll uh, we'll put that to the test. I like that. Uh <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that's pretty much it for current affairs. I wanted to end on an up note there. You know, I know Snoop Dogg isn't wrestling, but heck, Saucer Banks is his cousin. He's done a lot with wrestling, so it makes enough sense. And it was fun. So that being said, though, we're pretty much wrapped up for the day. Wolfie, why don't you go ahead and take us out, man? Hey, man, I just want to say to all the fans, thank you once again for listening to Live and in Color with Wolfie D. I'm Wolfie D and Jimmy Street is my co-host and I love him to death because he does everything for this show. <laughs> love you guys. Thank you for listening. And now a word from our sponsor. Getting engaged is a moment worth cherishing. A one of a kind ring that you design at blue Nile can help your love sparkle. Just choose your diamond and setting. When you've found the one, you'll get it delivered right to your door. Finding the right engagement ring can be nerve-wracking. At Blue Nile, you'll have the expert guidance needed and a diamond guarantee that ensures you're getting the highest quality at the best price. Cherish all of life's moments and save up to 30% at BlueNile.com. That's BlueNile.com. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Give Me Back My Pro Wrestling, the podcast that's based on the old school, but can still help you find the good stuff from today. Jimmy Street and the Plastic Sheik, Jared, are the undisputed tag team champions of the wrestling podcast world. From thought-provoking topics to superstar interviews to action figure expertise, this team does it all, and all they ask is, Give Me Back My Pro Wrestling! Every other Thursday, wherever you listen to podcasts. This is the big picture, Michael Jablonski. Don't forget to tune in every week to Jablonski's Pissed Off on the Give Me Back My Pro Wrestling YouTube channel. The fuck's wrong in this sport? He's gonna tell you all about it. He doesn't care what you think. You're gonna hear all about it. Mike Jablonski. In a world that has been completely divided for so long, two movie fans have decided to unite for the people and the betterment of mankind. One, an action movie buff. The other, a horror movie fanatic. Together, they will try to bridge the gap of both genres into one podcast with their battle cry. Give me back my action and horror movies. Listen along as Charlie and Nate alternate each week talking about action and horror movies they cherish, mostly from the VHS era. Also, including some modern examples that felt like the movies they grew up with by answering the battle cry. Give me back my action and horror movies. Available wherever you listen to podcasts. Look them up on Facebook and Instagram. If you're a fan of rock music, I'd really appreciate it if you took a moment to check out my podcast. It's called the Decibel Geek Podcast. We've been doing it for about 10 years now. We talk about Kiss. We talk about Ozzy. We talk about Motley Crue and Guns N' Roses and Metallica. We talk about all the legends from the 60s and on up to brand new bands that you should be hearing about today that you're not going to hear on the radio. It's Decibel Geek. Wherever you find your podcasts, you'll find us there. If you love rock and roll, I can almost guarantee you're going to love my show. 
If you're a pro wrestling fan, there's something for everyone at the Cheap Heat TV Podcast Network. From the Pro Wrestling Discussion Show, Cheap Heat TV Live, to the Interview Show, the Jackson Interaction Podcast with the king of all wrestling media, Gene Jackson, to the silliness of the Whitey Jenkins Show, and the brand new Zip, Xander's Irresistible Podcast with Charles Anders. You can check them all out and much more over at CheapHeatTVLive.com. So that was another great episode. Hey, Wolfie, tell them where they can find you on social media. Jimmy, they can find me in the club, bottle full of bub. I'm just kidding. Uh, they can find me on Facebook. Uh, my personal page is Warren Wolf, W-O-L-F-E. Uh, I'm on Instagram, at Warren Wolf 13. You can always find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, at Live Wolfie D. And then on YouTube, at Live and in Color with Wolfie D Podcast. Our website is anchor.fm slash Wolfie D. Here's the thing. Wolfie always has offers for his autograph photos. He has a selection of some awesome photos from throughout his career that he will autograph and personalize any way that you want him to. Just contact him either directly at his personal Facebook page or through any one of our other pages and we'll make sure you get in contact directly with Wolfie. Get those photos, right Wolfie? Yeah, I've got some good stuff on there, you know, to help with the podcast. Folks, if you can't get out to a show to meet Wolfie D, there's nothing like that, especially for the fans of PG-13 and Wolfie D. Also, do you have a product or business you'd like Wolfie D to talk about. Let us know about it by leaving a recorded message over at anchor.fm slash Wolfie D slash message. Leave your name and contact info and we'll get back to you. Once again, that's anchor.fm slash Wolfie D slash message. And before we go, you can always find me, your host, Jimmy Street, at James Rock Street on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. And hey, Jimmy, before we go real quick, I just want to add in there, uh, from the bottom of my heart, I really appreciate, first of all, the work you've done for this podcast. You have worked your butt off. Secondly, the people that are liking the page. Beyond that, even more, is the people that are listening. And we really appreciate that. Yeah, and remember, guys, the podcast drops a new episode every Monday at noon, and our past episodes are streaming now on demand on all major podcast formats. Thanks again. I got a cat for you, don't. got a cat. And here we go. The original white boy that came out sagging, not bragging, don't be hating, cause I'm spitting the truth. Still loving in color. Don't rush your mother. Utilize a hubcap. I like any other. Back in the day, I was NOD and I was P to the G plus the one and the three. In case you forgot, they call me Wolfie D. Been cloned and copied so many times. Tired of suckers taking credit for what is mine. You know who you are without me name dropping wrestling's first white boy coming out hip hop. Been doing it like this since 92. Lay low for a while when you thought I was through. Listen real close to these rhymes that I've injected. This shit's so sick it makes your ears get infected. Mad skills, no faking, there is no one great. Cause I'm bringing more folks and over one for later. Not here to play games, so you better be aware. You don't like me, so what? I really don't care. All the time I keep ticking and I can't be stopped. You suck a step to the side unless you want to get dropped. When I finish, I'll straight knock you out. Please allow me to tell you what it's all about. Gonna wind it up. And I'm driving it home, it's Wolfie D, baby Huh, I got a cap for your dome I got a cap for your dome We got a cap for your dome We got a cap for your dome This has been a James Rock Street production